From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Our top story this evening, the Reverend Chad Zelensky will become the Catholic Diocese of Fairbanks' sixth bishop next Monday. Eight archbishops and bishops will participate in the ordination mass scheduled for 3 p.m. at the Carlson Center here in Fairbanks. The diocese expects over a thousand people to attend the ceremony. Apostolic Nuncio Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano will also attend the ceremony. The Nuncio serves as the Vatican City's ambassador to the United States. Traditionally, ordinations are preceded by the night before by a Vesper service. In Fairbanks, this will take place at Sacred Heart Cathedral on Sunday at 6 p.m. Reverend Zelensky's appointment as the bishop of the largest diocese in the United States came in early November. The bishop-elect described what he has learned this past month to reporter Jamie Schwartzwald earlier today. I spent a whole week on retreat at the diocesan uh, retreat center in Lansing, Michigan. It was directed by Bishop Boyer. And what I take away from that retreat is, is just surrender to Christ and trust in his guidance. And um, also, too, as I get to know the people on the staff here, people in the diocese, is that God has gifted them with incredible abilities, talents, and, and together um, we'll continue to, you know, to move ahead. With the failure of Proposition 1 in the October 7th municipal election, the Fairbanks North Star Borough again has power to govern local air quality. Last night, borough officials held a town hall meeting and took public testimony on the issue. A majority of those who testified did so in favor of strong borough regulations to control air quality. The Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation was in town last week seeking input on its statewide implementation plan to solve the borough's PM 2.5 problem. Assemblyman John Davies, who called last night's town hall, says the state's plan does not address the issue in a timely fashion. In my view, that that SIP is not acceptable uh, to say that we're going to work on getting uh, acceptable air quality by somewhere around 2019 is just taking too long, I believe. Representatives with the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District held a work session with the Interior State Legislative Delegation last night. The district is expecting a four to eight million dollar shortfall in the next budget cycle. Despite the loss of an estimated 277 students, the district is looking at a 1.6 percent increase in operational costs for the 2015-2016 school year. Topping the capital projects list is $11.4 million for the final renovation phase of the Barnett Magnet School. The school board is also interested in creating additional magnet schools. Board President Heidi Haas would like to see changes in House Bill 278, which offered financial backing for Alaska charter schools. And we would like to ask that if um, there's an opportunity for some language change within the bill, to open that up to district magnet schools so that the districts can um, then do what the, the private sector is able to do, but we're not having to wait for the private sector to do that. It was an emotional time for Alaska U.S. Senator Mark Begich today. Begich was elected in 2008 and lost his bid for another term in the last general election to Dan Sullivan. Today, Begich presented his farewell speech to the Senate. It has been a true honor to serve the U.S. Senate, to serve the people of Alaska, and to know every day we contributed a little bit to making life better for an Alaskan, for Alaskans, for this country. All right, when we come back, the stage is set for Dance Theater Fairbanks' production of The Little Match Girl. Also, it's a Thursday night, which means it's time for Fairbanks Flavor. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. One of the most popular kids' movies this year has been Frozen. As we hear in this report from Mike Schultz, some of those characters will be visiting Fairbanks this Saturday. The river will be swarming with thousands of kids Saturday, and all because of an idea that Craig Campo, along with the Fairbanks Community Food Bank, came up with. And I thought, well, what a great uh, opportunity to uh, have the reindeer on our showroom, get the kids down here, and they could meet all the characters. Uh, you know, Elsa, Kristoff, Anna, uh, Olaf, uh, can't even remember all of them, but we're going to have all the characters here. We're going to have the reindeer here for pictures. 
Um, and the whole idea is a fundraiser for the food bank. We, this is a big year for the, for the food bank uh, w with the Santa's Clearinghouse um, uh, going away. So we thought, uh, let's, let's help the community and have some fun for the kids. So Craig Campo gave us a call, and apparently he's joined forces with Tired Iron and asked if we wanted to do a big food drive. And he was going to bring in Elsa and Sven, and now we have an Olaf that will be there. Um, and it's just going to be an incredible event. So if somebody wants to get their picture with Elsa or Sven, or I believe Olaf will be around too, then all they have to do is bring in some food, and they'll, they'll receive a little coupon. Or if you don't bring in any food, then it's $10 to take your picture with Elsa. And one lady has a very special invitation for all the kids. Hi boys and girls, this is Elsa here. I want to tell all of you a secret. Myself, Anna, Olaf, Sven, and even Kristoff are all coming to visit you. So tell your friends we'll be at Compos this Saturday for some frozen fun. Because of expected traffic problems, here's an idea for your family. Why not park the car in the Fred Meyer parking lot and walk down to Compos? Of course, by the time you get there, you might be frozen. Mike Schultz reporting. Fairbanks residents will have a chance to see a classic production put on by dancers at a local studio this weekend. Stephanie Woodard has a sneak peek in this report. Dance Theater Fairbanks has been working for months. Students and teachers have been preparing for their show, The Little Match Girl, a traditional show the studio has performed for years. There's just there's a there's a legacy um, of, kind of little match girl dancers that have kind of you know been in in and out of the studio over the last 10 15 years. The little match girl herself says she's excited to bring the Hans Christian Andersen character to life. I didn't know it was actually like um, we were trying out for the part that day. I just thought it was for an ensemble tryout, and I was like. Oh, I got the part, yay. The show's packed with performers ranging from three years old to in their 20s. There's, with all the different genres of dance that are involved with it, it's pretty amazing what all of us kids in this community, community can do together. The story is sure to bring a tear to your eye and even contains classical music to get you in the holiday spirit just in time. As a whole, Little Mash Girl is um, just a really beautiful, heartwarming story that people are really going to like the fact that we have a lot of holiday classic songs that they can sing along to and they're going to feel like they're really like kind of brought into the show. The show opens Friday at 7 p.m. and runs through Sunday. It'll be held at the Edna Wise Theater inside of the dance studio. I'm Stephanie Woodard reporting. Time again for Fairbanks Flavor. Today, Lisa has a special guest, and they are talking bread dough braiding. Buongiorno, I'm Lisa Gambardella. Welcome to Gambardella's. I have a special guest today. Hi, I'm Katie Looper. And so, Lisa, what are we making today? Well, as you know, we sell our fresh dough. Mm -hmm. This oh. is a bread dough. And we're going to make a braided loaf. Cut that into thirds with a right. chopper. We're going to put some rosemary in there and some Kalamata olives. This is a really fun thing to make at home. All right, what's next? So take them, you roll them just like Play-Doh. So you roll them mm -hmm, long for like the cookie sheet. And what you'll do is you'll put that right on the table, the rosemary and the olives. And roll it in And there? incorporate it, All yeah. Right. So I've got some that are already rolled. And now we're going to braid it. OK, so if you pin down the end, like that, we'll overlap them a tiny bit. Just a simple braid. That's it. Look how fast that is. It's so easy. I know. Right? So working in news, we're always so busy. Is this something we can make at home? Just kind Absolutely. of a quick thing. Yeah, you can get right to the fun part. And I've got one that's already baked. How long does it take to bake? I'm doing a 400 degree oven, and it takes about 10 minutes. And if you want to paint it with some oil and garlic, that is the finishing touch on our beautiful that's... braided. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> I know, you just break off a chunk. You're going to want to make two. Oh, yeah. Because you're going to want to <laughs> snack on one while you're making dinner. <laughs> See our recipes at webcenter11.com. Brought to you by Gambardella's Pasta Bella. Well, that's pretty neat. Yeah, bread I love braiding. bread. And I like braiding. I can't do French braids, but maybe I can bread braid. Yeah, or ponytails. Pony I can yeah, do ponytails. Like that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, Joe Cook is up next with UAF Sports News and more high school basketball team previews. All right, sports is next with Joe Cook. Stay with us.
Welcome back interior Alaska. Joe Cook here with your Thursday sports. Recently, Alaska hockey landed seven new recruits who signed to the program. Three forwards, Chad Staley, Riker Lear, Tyler Klein of the Minnesota Wilderness, three defensemen, Nicholas Coverstein, Jordan Byrne, Tristan Thompson, and a goalie, Jesse Jinx, will beat Nanox next year. The talented players hail from Western Canada and the Western region of the U.S. Alaska's current freshmen are already making an impact, and they'll need that this weekend as Alaska closes out 2014 at home against the Alabama Huntsville Chargers. UAF split against number two Minnesota State on the road last week. That performance could start a nice run for the Nooks. We played really well and hopefully uh, we can keep the momentum going here uh, into the next year and uh, hopefully uh, the second half of the season we uh, can play like that every night. It's really tough to string together two games, especially in college hockey. I uh, think kind of stick to our game plan, be good on special teams and uh, just be overall hard work. I think you're finding that all four lines and, and all 6D and the goaltenders are all contributing to our team's success. So I think that um, carrying the momentum is just realizing what we're doing to have success. And we continue our high school basketball team previews. We start with the Lathrop Malamute Boys and Girls Squads. Here's more. In the boys program at Lathrop, everyone is back except for the obvious. Kyle Carlson is up at the U, but the returners are stout. Players like Cole Burner, Gabriel Howard, Curtis White, sophomore Jaden Whiteside, and West Valley transfer Kobe Milk will be key in a possible fourth straight MAC title. Milo Griffin returns at the helm and deflects any pressure his team may have. Our guys don't handle the pressure. I mean, I have pressures on me. I, I, they don't. They don't. They don't mind. They love it. But I, I get a little uptight because it's you know because I want to win so bad. Our, our main goal is always to get in the state, but but our thing is. To try to win and be uh, 500 this year. I think 500 is, is a tough goal for us this year with the teams we're playing. So if we can if we can finish 500, it's be a good season for us this year. The girls team is young and talented with potential as always. Head coach David Stewart has Jana Hadukovic to lead five other freshmen who can contribute immediately along with returners like senior Shakira Shaw, junior Carly Fitzgerald, and sophomore Mackenzie Warner. Junior sharpshooter Rachel Jordan is back after missing last season with a broken ankle. Coach Stewart is optimistic that this group could turn some heads this year. This year, we coming into the we coming into a season where this talent that we have understand the system already. Uh, the new coaches that coming in with us have taught some of these kids. These kids understand the system that we run here at Lathrop already. So we have an identity this year starting now. We know what we want to do. We got good shooters. We got good. We can drive the ball to the basket. So we, you know, this year is, should be a good year for us. Lathrop opens their season at Delta on Friday, then hosts the Hutchinson Hawks this Saturday night for a doubleheader at 6 p.m. for the third annual Silent Night on Lathrop's Joe T. Court. This team will be on a long road trip to start the season. Let's check in with the West Valley girls basketball team. Last year, there were a number of firsts for this West Valley girls team. Head coach Jesse Craig led the pack to a MAC title and third place in the state in her first season. It was the first year Alaska standout Ruthie Hebert played at West Valley after transferring from Lathrop. And a number of players made their first state tournament appearances. They're all back for more. Last year at state, a lot of us hadn't really played a lot at a big state tournament before. And I think this year we'll have a lot more experience and we won't get as nervous and we'll be able to play better. I think we're going to work harder on not letting the game get to us mentally as much because last year we had a lot of mental problems with each other and this we're just going to focus on playing the game and if something happens let it go and keep going and that will make a big difference. West Valley receives another Lathrop transfer and sophomore Alexis Shipman to go along with promising freshman a strong junior class and senior point guard Carly Marquez. Craig is excited to see how her returners and new girls will perform in a tough environment right off the bat. They play at Barrow this weekend. You know, it's going to kind of unknown. We haven't played Barrow before, and um, Barrow's a, t a place like Kodiak where it's a tougher place to play. You know, the, the gym is going to be packed and not very many red and yellow shirts in there. So mostly for my girls, I really want them to execute, and I want them to play defense well. I want them to play together and just play mentally tough. So, so that's our goal is, yeah, take it each game at a time and add them all up in the end, and hopefully we come out on top. And the last note, the West Valley and Lathrop hockey, hockey game set for Friday has been rescheduled for January 7th. So no uh, dog bowl hockey there Friday night. But that's it for sports tonight. Weather is next and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back in the Fairbanks Evening News. Mike Schultz once again talking to you about weather. And for the most part, just a cloudy gray day across the interior. A little chilly, no wind to talk about and not any snow either. 
and not much change in the next couple days. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Photograph night sent in from Delta Junction. You can see Richard Mitchell is able to capture a nice Christmas cabin here. Beautiful colored lights. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, by all means, send to photos at ktvf.com. And we are looking for Christmas type photographs. So if you have one out there, be sure and share it with the rest of the audience. Here's what's going on as far as our almanac is concerned. 14 degrees. That's our high for the day. The current temperature also 14. Low last night, 9. Record high, 44. That was set in 1940 and 1964. Dropped down to 54 below. Your sunrise and sunset under four hours of daylight. A loss of three minutes from yesterday. On our satellite and radar, again, not a whole lot of going on. Not real organized systems. A little bit of activity moving across southeast Alaska. Some showers still moving to the northwest of the Fairbanks area in a southwest to northeast direction. That's not uh, really causing any grief. We'll go to a little bit closer and zoom in on that and show you where that's happening around the mental area probably. As you can see here, just hanging there, not really going anywhere, no, mo no movement at all. So we're not looking for anything to move into the Fairbanks area. Well, the bigger picture, once again, over the lower 40, I should, I should say the lower sections of Alaska, the southeast, it is raining around Ketchikan, just cloudy and foggy at Juneau, partly cloudy at Anchorage. Also, nice weather at Kodiak, 39 degrees there. Over the rest of the uh, southwest, you can see looking at partly cloudy to cloudy skies. And then we move up to the north slope, cloudy skies at Barrow, 8 degrees, and Fort Yukon, cloudy in 1 degree. Lower 48 weather tonight. The rain is moving in across much of California, and they are getting drenched. They're talking about close to 8 inches of rain in some areas. More rain falling across uh, southern sections of Texas, cloudy skies across the north central sections. To the east, things are finally drying out after that big storm they had there. You can see it on the satellite radar, nice circulation here, but all of it is moving rapidly off to the northeast, so they're getting a break there. But look at the storm that's moving across the west coast and just dumping just tons of rain on uh, San Francisco, Monterey area, and a lot of heavy snow in the uh, Sierra Nevadas too. And the overall outlook for this system is for the jet to drop even further south, bringing a lot of that rain into Los Angeles with maybe two to four inches of rain there. A lot of showers and thunderstorms around the San Francisco area. And the jet stream, once again, uh, expected to take a dive down to the south, helping to usher in some cooler air to the uh, areas, if you can see here, in the light blue. And then just the opposite on the southern side of the jet, nice and mild temperatures there. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow. The northern sections look like this, partly cloudy for Barrow and Nome, scattered showers of snow in uh, the Fort Yukon area. Here in the interior, we're looking at uh, cloudy skies at Fairbanks and Delta Junction. Flurries likely for Healy. All over southeast Alaska, the rain is expected to continue, continue from uh, Juneau right on across to Ketchikan. And over to the southwest, a mixed bag of weather once again. Snow showers at Cold Bay and Bethel with rain showers expected at Kodiak. And down around the south central sections, looking at flurries in Anchorage, cloudy skies at Homer, and snow showers for Valdez. So not a whole lot of real severe weather going on. Once again, time for our kids' weather all this week, talking with the kids from Nordale Elementary School. But tonight, let's hear from the teacher. Hi, I'm Mari Torgerson, and this is my fifth grade class here at Nordale Elementary School. And we have a weather fact to share with you. Class, did you know the temperature of a bolt of lightning has been measured at 54,000 degrees, or six times hotter than the, than the surface of the sun? Wow. And as always, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our kids' weather. Next week, we'll be hearing from the kids from North Pole Elementary School. All right, real quickly, looking at our road conditions for a Thursday night. In the Dalton I Elliott Highway, icy patches, some snow on the road, and just some uh, gusty winds here and there. The same expected at Steve Richardson Highways, snow-packed. Snow removal equipment on the road because we do have some snow out there to worry about. So keep that in mind. Give them plenty of distance. And on the Parks Highway, Frosted surfaces, icy spots, and some snow on the road also. Here's your forecast for the remainder of the night. And again, we're looking at uh, 7 degrees, the overnight low, cloudy skies, just a few flurries here and there, chilly. Tomorrow's forecast uh, looking at 9 degrees, continued cloudy with falling temperatures, 9 days left until we get daylight back again. And we, get, or we start gaining daylight, I should say. And the five-day outlook calling for maybe some snow showers on Sunday with temperatures warming back up again to the low to mid-teens. That's always nice to see. No real storms to talk about. Overnight lows will also be chilly once again, but nothing like they should be this time of year. They should be 15, 20 below this time of year as an average. You know, not to change subjects off weather or anything, but this hat reminds me about the toy drive that we have going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. we want to encourage everybody. Mike, you know a lot about that. Yep. So Go on over to Walmart and, and drop off a toy for a, a child that would really love it this, this time of year. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're taking donations, and that would be great. 
Mm -hmm. to see people participate and in any that. of the West Madden uh, real estate offices. Yep. That's yes. right. All right, good reminder there, Stephanie. Thanks a lot. Ho, and ho, ho. Yep. <laughs> That'll wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, CIA Chief John Brennan argues against the recently released information of torture as being not truthful. That's next with Brian Williams. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. And well, with that, we'll say from all of us here at the News Center, have a good night. We'll see you back here at 11.